We've got that weekend feeling and what a weekend it is. Welcome to another What A Shout. All the big calls on all the big races. And boy, we've got some whoppers for you this weekend. Last weekend's loss is this Saturday, Sunday's gain. Super Saturday, it's been built. Chuck in Sunday as well. Everywhere you look, whatever you fancy. If you're an international flat fan, Melbourne, Ramwick in, in Sydney, go to Riyadh for the Saudi Cup. Loads of good all-weather action and you jumps fans out there, does it get any better than this? Myself, Dave Orton, delighted to be back with you. If you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe. Get your comments in below for the panellists on Facebook or indeed Twitter. Hashtag what a shout. Let's get straight into the action, shall we? Oh, lockdown's still here. What better place to be than on your sofa and joining us? Not quite on his sofa, but Paul Keeney back on the show. How you doing, Dave? All right. I, uh, yeah, I planned that perfectly, didn't I? I missed that garbage all-weather stuff last week that you had to preview, and I'm back to the top stuff. <laughs> had to get that in, didn't you? Absolutely. Yeah, we had Graham Robby on the show last weekend. Keels, you've been previewing everything Cheltenham, right? Yeah, I've been working on the Cheltenham book um, that comes out um, in the middle of next week, I think. Um, yeah, just doing a lot of horse profiles. I'm going to have to rewrite a lot of them after the weekend. Plenty uh, plenty of runners with chances. Uh, they're either going to advertise them or, or, or maybe finish them this weekend. Yeah, loads of curveballs, absolutely. We will get into that with the panel, mainly on Sunday, of course. Who's going to turn up from the original rescheduled Betfair meeting on the Sunday at Newbury? Right then, from our sponsors, Bet365, Pat Cooney joins us again. Yeah, good morning. And, uh, you know, you have a feast or famine. We've certainly got a feast over the next couple of days, haven't we? So all the stars are on show. So let's hope they all turn up and deliver. Yeah, great to have you back on, Pat. Uh, loads of pearls coming from him, no doubt, giving us what's hot and what's not in the markets. And delighted to say from Harrisham, from Dayson Court Base, Tom Simmons joins us. Really good weekend to have you on, Tom. Morning, all. How are you? Thank you very much for having me. I tell you what, Tom, I was worried about my hair growing in lockdown. That is a that is an absolute that is a, a are you sort of seeing how far you can go. Well, yeah, I get a lot of stick for it, but I'm just in that sort of frame of mind that you've got to appreciate it while you still have it. Absolutely, obviously, we will get to the Kingwell Hurdle at Wing Canton, but you've got one of the public horses. I think we can say that song for someone going in that. It's been some season, really, Tom. In fact, 2020 was very good for you numerically. And uh, this season continues rolling. I think with 111 runners, you've had something like 20-odd winners, haven't you? You've had loads of seconds, loads of thirds. And at your favourite track, your local track, Herefordshire, you had the first leg of a double this week. Things are going really well. Yeah, it was a, it was a great week. We had a very quiet January, like a lot of people, due to really the weather mainly, and more than anything. Um, and so you kind of, it almost feels like you're starting again. And this week, you still have this issue where horses are either handling the gluey holding ground, which is always the way it is post frost. Um, but uh, some of them thankfully dealt with it okay. Um, and um, Royal Claret and History Beret being no exceptions to that. So it was great to see them do the job. Yeah, we'll get to Royal Claret in just a minute. But let's talk about you, Tom, for people that aren't so aware. You're one of the younger trainers out there, aren't you? And you've been around the houses a little bit. James Fancher, you spent a bit of time with, and of course, as assistant to Nicky Henderson. Yeah, so I um, yeah, I grew up in, in Hay on Wye, so I've always been around this area. I rode out for a, a permit holder, then I'll train the Nicky uh, Sharp or Evans as she is now, and then um, moved more this way towards Ross on Wye, and then went to ride out at about, I think, age 11 to for Venetia Williams, where I completely and utterly got the, uh, the bug. You know, I've, as I say, I've always been very spoiled throughout my life before I started training that I was lucky enough to be involved in or in a very very small way obviously um, trainers like Venetia James and Nikki who had horses that were horses of interest I mean obviously when I was riding out with Venetia every now and again she had um, Teton Mill Lady Rebecca the Outback Way all these great horses that used to really capture my imagination and of course you set up on your own your first winner was Alpha Way back in 2011 you've had some great horses since then Fox Cub of course Kaki de la Pre. Uh, now let's solve a mystery here Tom shall we it's a commentator's nightmare, but your listed hurdle winner at Haydock early this season. I'm going to say Hlandinabo Lad. Is that right? Yeah, we just because it's, it's sort of in the vernacular where we are, it's, we, we just say Landinabo. I mean, it is an LL, so in the Welsh version, it should be Hlandinabo, but we just say Landinabo Lad. 
let's get a quick word on him before I go to, uh, to the guys. What, um, of course, we, we know he loves Haydock. We know he loves soft ground. Is there a target for him later on? Because he's a, he's, a, he's a smart sort, isn't he? He is. He, he is. Um, I just He ran in the um, Supreme trial at Haydock and just didn't really run any sort of race last time. However, I see the fourth horse. I mean, at the time, we, we were obviously very disappointed, but it wasn't like he ran and wasn't good enough. He ran and wasn't the same horse. I wonder whether he had a harder race behind my, my Drogo than we realised. I'm hoping that subsequent results will show that my Drogo is probably um, well above average. I think the skeletons have made no um, sort of, uh, they're not hiding the, the fact and the admiration they hold for him. And actually, I find out I was involved with his mother when I was working at Nikki's in my Petra. She's a very good mare. Um, so he, he's fine, thank you. And it's just, it was just a disappointing sort of stepping stone towards whatever we're going to. But as I say, the fourth horse won a grade two yesterday at Sandown um, in um, uh, Anything for Love. Um, so it might just be one of those things that just didn't work out. Nico actually that day had Duva Dare to ride, Allard, and another one. They're all favourite. And he had what he can only be described as a dire he did use another word day because it didn't go right but all the horses came back they were fine and there's another day great to have the eloquent tom simmons on isn't it because you, as you're seeing why hawaii was so highly regarded nicky henderson's he knows his breeding and he knows his form extremely well can't wait to get into the show with him uh pat cooney you wanted to ask him about his winner of course at herefordshire this week yeah tom yeah the, the wonderful mayor royal claret won at hereford on wednesday and i just thought it was a real candidate for the ride of the season by ben post I was absolutely exhausted watching him ride the horse, never mind sitting on her and pushing her and shoving her. I just wondered what your thoughts on on the ride and uh, what, a, what a wonderful mare she is, particularly around Hereford, of course. Yeah, thank you. It was it was great. And actually, we'd had we'd had a very nice juvenile run, I think, well, I think she is, Table Mountain. And I just thought to myself, God, I can't believe I'm running her, who definitely wants better ground on the same day as Royal Claret, who wants it, Toaster Bog, um, God rest Toaster's soul. Um, but she, um, Table Mountain ran, I thought, adequately in the ground. She just got a bit bogged down in the end. <clears throat> but Royal Claret um, was the one horse who I kept thinking during the day would definitely love it. And um, as you say, you're watching it kind of going, is she loving it? Is, yeah, what's, what's, what's happening here? And actually, I watched it with Jamie Snowden, whose horse, whose horse didn't actually perform on the day. But he just kept saying you're going to win because actually you're watching her. But if you, I always find if you watch her jumping, she's not getting tired or further back. She's just staying the same pace the whole way round and keeps going. And again, <clears throat> I used to ride her mother a fair bit at Nikki Henderson's Parada, and she wasn't the speediest in the world, but talented. Um, and <clears throat> so the pedigree is all there. You know, she's a half sister to um, Marada, who Dan Skelton has as a listed place horse, and her brother Tarada is with. Um, Oliver Sherwood, who's obviously a bit fragile, but 140 rated chaser. So um, I think that could be her blaze of glory um, there because it was a 0 to 130 mares race on her track she loves. And as we, we tried chasing with her, that won't be what she likes doing. We did try that, so there's not really much else she can do for us. And she's a nine year old now. And I can't really stress enough the difference someone like Ben riding her, know, you know, who knows her in, in intricately, you know, knows how to get the best out of her not to push her too hard, just to keep coaxing and chiding her, keeping the bit up in her mouth. And then obviously the result that ensued was a testament to that. Yeah, whoever does the awards at the Leicesters for either the season, a little ding go off in their office, didn't they? Look back on your members club if you want to see that replay. It was absolutely superb. Before we get to song someone, we'll do that now in the Kingwell. We've got to get on with the show. Let's see what's coming up for you then. OK, hot topic time. The wait is over. We'll be getting the panel's ideas of the national weight tiger roll in particular. And maybe they might have a pick for the big one itself in April. Racing clues. I think we're going to be light on that this week. But don't worry. We've got six big race previews culminating in the big handicap hurdle at Newbury 335 on Sunday. Of course, the big calls from the panellists and the weekend winners. If you'd like to sign up to our sponsors, Bet365 now remains a great time to do so because there's a referral code we can give you on joining. Just type in SHOUT365, minimum £5 deposit for up to 100 bet credits. Terms and conditions apply. Hot topic time then. The wait is over. OK, the national weights are out on Tuesday. It was published. What would he, what wouldn't he get? We did it last week on the show, of course, with Tiger Roll, Irish versus UK handicapping. A mark of 166 then. £10 higher 
than when he won the race in 2019. Kills, let's come to you on this. First of all, the usual fanfare and hoo-ha, wasn't it, from Michael O'Leary about his mark? He wanted something in the 150s. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it, it, it's ludicrous that you, you've got an owner, OK, puts loads and loads of money into the sport, but he acts like a spoiled brat at times and trying to bully the handicapper, which he does, which he's done on more than one occasion, whether it's Cheltenham, whether it's the Grand National or whatever. It's ridiculous. I'm glad the handicappers uh, uh, basically said, uh, I'll get on with my job and you, you're entitled to your opinion. I'm entitled to ignore it. I think that's what he said. He's done the right thing. He's given him a mark of 166. Will he run? Will he, will he not run? At the end of the day, now, I genuinely do not care anymore because as much as I love the horse, I can't stand all this nonsense that goes with him. So run him or don't run him, but shut up and get on with it uh, as far as I'm concerned. Woo! OK, we're off and running, are we, on the hot topic? Let's go to Tom Simmons then. Tom, we gave him a Racing Post rating here of 174. He beat Magic of Light in 2019. He's got 166. You think that's perfectly fine, don't you? Yeah, I mean, creatures of habit that trainers are. We love a moan about the handicapper. But his mark is only because he's positively, you know, done well. You know, I suppose last year, sadly, didn't happen uh, for reasons not in Tiger Roll's hands or hooves. Um, <clears throat> but I look at last year, or the year before, rather, the national he ran in. You know, he, he was the eye catching horse the entire way around. You know, he was loving it, travelling beautifully jumping adequately like he does just waste no time in the air and it never looked in doubt so you just think to yourself okay you never quite know if you're going to turn up in the same form <clears throat> but would he have won with another 10 pounds on his back plus maybe even the answer is yes i mean he won so easily uh, in in 2020 um or do i mean 2019 that I, I don't think this is, um, <clears throat> well, this should be a problem provided the horse is the same horse. But this is the point, you know, the handicapper. I think people forget handicappers, that it gets to every horse in the end. You know, it, it, horses either can deal with what they're carrying figure wise or they can't. You know, I mean, obviously, if we could all roll horses back to the bottom of their weights, then they could all have a new lease of life. But that's not how the world works, is it? Um, whether the horse is quite the same horse or in the same frame of mind is a question, but um, the reports are, from what I can gather, is that um, uh, he is. But I think people, as you say, get to route this whole media frenzy. The horse doesn't need to run in another race ever again. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, he has been a phenomenal horse. And one I remember on the day when going, oh, that little rat that won the Triumph will never probably win again. <laughs> well, he's bucked that trend. Yeah, absolutely. And it's an interesting point you make there, Tom. Is he in the right frame of mind? The two times he's run in November in his career, he's run absolutely abominably. If you go back to the Cheltenham Cross Country, of course, when we last saw him, he didn't look interested at all. However, he is in the Boyne hurdle on Sunday. So that question will be answered. Uh, and, you know, as Tom says, the vibes are good. Let's go to you, Pat Cooney, then. National Weights came out on Tuesday. How was it in the office? Well, when the weights came out, there was only a couple of pounds between them all, really. I mean, we were listening to the trainers and the owners afterwards saying, yeah, I'm happy with that. It's about what I thought, you know, Tiger Roll being an exception. But Tiger Roll, he has to pay the tax, doesn't he, for winning a couple of Grand Nationals. So I think they're OK with his mark as well. And the general vibe was, yeah, yeah, happy. He's on pace to run. So we didn't think we'd be busy on the race, but it was absolutely manic. And Clothcap was the one that emerged as the best backed in the race. And of course, at the moment, we're first five places. And just so many horses being back. Secret Reprieve was popular as well. And it just all goes well for the race, I think, going forward. But, um, you know, still very, very hard to pick the winner. And fortunately, I'm going to ask Tom now, um, our social media team, they're interested to know what horses you would fancy for the race right now. Well, I think you've said them, but I mean, I thought what Cough Clap did round Newbury was astonishing. I mean, his jumping and from the way the boldness of him was just astonishing to watch. Um, and I think they had a, some good um, video coverage of him jump standing off some of these fences, which isn't always the best thing to do at Aintree, I will say that. But um, as I say, the one horse I really do like, and we've been bloodied our noses by him a few times, is Secret Reprieve. Um, I know the owners would probably dearly love or who wouldn't want to, but, um, you know, they like that type of national kind of staying chaser. Um, 
in um, him. And uh, I, I've always been very impressed with what he did at Chepstow, you know, and he's he's a really efficient jumper. And, you know, for a horse with actually quite limited experience, he's gone a long way in a very short space of time. And it doesn't seem to be a huge surprise to the team. It's not like they're going, he's suddenly appeared in front of us and uh, become this horse. It's almost like Evan has, you know, um, guided him to be the horse he now is, which is what we all try and do, but it doesn't always work out. But um, no, I thought he in the trial ran very well. And then obviously in the Welsh National itself, ran an absolute blinder. Yeah, I should get a line on that form with two amigos running this week in the Grand National trial as well. Kills, have you got a, a long range pick? Basically, when the weights came out, Kills, did you go, that's what I was hoping for a particular horse? Um, no, not really. I mean, they don't do that much tinkering now, nowadays anyway, do they? I mean, the horse I've been interested in for a long while, obviously, is Kimberlite Candy. He was all over it last year. Perfectly well treated, as far as I'm concerned. Um, real eye-catching jump really well again in the beacher, didn't he, earlier in the season. Obviously laid out for it. I'd love to see Bristol to my run well in the race. I think, I think it'd be really great. I'm glad he's going for it. Uh, and he could be quite a good sight, couldn't he, in the, in, at the beginning, if he goes... If he goes from the front, I'm sure he'll be up there. Um, and he wouldn't be without a chance, you know, if he gets home because of the flat track, bit of cut in the ground, would be perfect for him. Uh, there we go. OK, one from Tom, one from Kills. I'll throw one into the mix as well. Cloth cap just keeps catching my eye. Trevor Hemmings, we know his association with the race. If it dries up a little bit, he can make a bold sight. But then, racing clues. Wasn't so much to go on last weekend, but thankfully Warwick got the card that we were expecting the kingmaker card i think we'll call it that and all mankind did what most of us expected us to paul keely but of course your horse sky pirate was in the race as well yeah he was um you know i think you know personally i think sky pirate was one of those ones burying off a strong pace in the big field not necessarily chasing up a, a free going front runner and he he finished very tired to me whether he's had enough of the season that was his fifth race um he's obviously running handicaps every time before that maybe he just had enough maybe he's not as good as i thought he was but you can't take anything away from the winner who you know is really really enthusiastic the one thing i will say is he didn't jump as well there as he had in his previous um runs this season and he made two or three mistakes that he might not get away with cheltenham i think warwick has the lowest or one of the lowest faller rates in the entire country uh and cheltenham's is is much nearer the top uh the you know fences are simply stiffer and then he's going to have this you know, he's going to be get, get taken on by Energy Mean at, um, at, at Cheltenham, uh, a very sure-footed jumper himself. So um, I still think he's the right third favourite, if you know what I mean. He's, his form isn't that far off him, for sure. But um, he's got a bit to prove as well in the jumping stakes. Yeah, well, Shishkin 170, Enegamine 168, the second favourite for the Argyle, and 165 for all mankind. And kills, he just absolutely loves Warwick, doesn't he? Made for the place. Uh, yeah, but I mean, he's done his he's done his winning at a lot of tracks, hasn't he? I mean, he he whizzed round Sandown easily enough, doesn't he? I don't think there's I don't think there's any problem with the track for him. But I mean, a sharp two miles when you when you're that much of a king goer, um, then obviously it is going to suit you. Yeah, I know that Sky Pirate won at Warwick last time, but he didn't face anything as speedy as that. Okay, that was the kingmaker then, Pat Cooney. Anything from the week? Yeah, well, the best the, the best. Uh, performance over the weekend, there wasn't much to aim at, of course, was Ellie May when she won at Lace in the Opera Hat over the two miles. Her best form is over further. She looks all systems go, doesn't she, for the Mayor's Chase. I'm looking at her price now. She's nine to four favourite for the race. The form stacks up well. She jumps well. She's got a very rock solid profile. She seems to be getting better and better. So she was the star of the show over the weekend. Going midweek during the week on Wednesday, there was an unraced three year old of uh, Mark Johnston. Uh, came out called See the Shells. Watch that one win. He won by six and a half lengths. It was probably near a 16 and a half lengths on pulling up. Unraced, absolutely powered home. Definitely one for the notebook. Whether or not the form stacks up, I don't know. But if you go seeing this, believe in, then you believe in this fella. See the Shells. Yeah, check out the replay of that. Mark Johnson does look like he's got a good one. But... Go, go... Go out, Patrick, what price do you make Shattered Love uh, for the same race as Ellie May? Shattered Love, 14 to one as we speak. That's 14, a... well, she's second. She's beaten five and a half lengths by Ellie May over two mile, and that is way yeah. too short for Shattered Love. That, that actually went down as uh, on Racing Bros ratings, I think by miles, her best ever run at two miles. Uh, she's obviously won a JLT. I think 14 yeah. to one each way is uh, a, a big play. Oh, a little curveball then. Happy days. They were your racing clues. 
First of the big race previews coming your way. 2.40 at Haydock. Really good card there that must not go unmissed. It is the Grand National Trial. Three mile four. Really soft ground. Kills, give us some help. Yeah, difficult. I mean, not a chance has won very easily. Uh, uh, well, a commanding style at least in the in the last two runs he's had uh, this season. He's been laid out for... He's in at Ascot, but it's supposed to be the uh, uh, preferred engagement. So he's a worthy favourite. Uh, and you've got two amigos who was, um, I think, was placed in this last year. He was obviously placed in the World's National. But, you know, I, I like some rock-solid um, uh, chase for, well, form at Haydock, but that way. And Ramsey's to tie is a very big price for a horse that beat Yellow Enki earlier in the season, just three starts ago uh, at Cheltenham. Now, he hasn't run well his last two outings, but he's run at this meeting for the last two years. He finished second in this race two years ago. And then he took out a, uh, a grade two novice hurdle last year before before he ran in the uh, Albert Bartler. So there is there only two runs at the track. He's handled it really well both times. And Lord de Manil, who was, you know, he's only been ninth in the beach and ninth in the uh, uh, Welsh National so far this year. Didn't run great, but his form at Haydock last year, he won two on the spin, then he finished second in this race. Obviously really, really does like this track. There'd be my two arrows at the race. Thanks, Kills. Yeah, uh, that, he's interesting, the latter, isn't he? The horse that you and Pat have both on this show previously given some love to him. Fagos Gillard taking five off Ramsey's detail. That's going to be a bonus. Tom Simmons, did you look at this? I did, yes. Um, and as previously alluded to, the form of the uh, Welsh National, again, I think is something because uh, I think will stand, well, it is standing up, I think, already. Um, and the two amigos, you know, bred by Robert Raley Cohen, trained by Nicky Martin, hasn't got, you know, loads of horses, but got some really talented ones this year, which is great to see. Um, he's not very big, <clears throat> but I think he'd be a horse this this kind of race would really suit. You know, he might rock and roll in front out there and um, and uh, stay there. I hope he doesn't seem to be bothered by very attritional ground. Um, and yeah, I see him as a real, real challenger in this race. Um, and you know, give a compliment to the form of um, Secret Reprieve. He's always there or thereabouts in the abundant stamina. Where does he sit in the market at the moment, Pat Cooney? Well, at the moment, not a chance is our favourite. We're just very much respectful of the Warwick win. But you can you can put a lot of these in the equation, really, Dave, can't you? I think uh, the likes of the two amigos, he's nine to two in that second favourite spot. I think not a chance. He's sure to go a favourite. But there's there's some real uh, contenders in this race. And they, ha they have that Haydock soft ground stamina profile. My eyes joined to uh, Sojourn of Anthony Honeyballs, who was second in a very similar race here last time out. He only went up a couple of pounds for that run. And he... He's an eight-year-old, but he hasn't had a great deal of racing. So he, he's one that caught my eye. Another one near the bottom, well, on the bottom, on guard. I just think, you know, he's got 10-6, Ramsey the tail, 11-12. And again, it was a likeable winner, Ascot, last time out. So it's, it's an open enough race, but I think not a chance. He was a well back winner, wasn't he, at that Warwick race that day? So I'm sure the punters will latch on to him, but there could be value elsewhere in the race. So Sojourn appeals to me. I nearly had him on top, Pat. I went with on guard in the end. I just think that Ascot form might be the more solid of the pair, and he gets weight from them all. OK, let's go to Wing Canton. Time a lot of you will be waiting for you. 3.18, you heard that right, 3.18. It is the Kingwell Hurdle. And it's a really interesting race, isn't it? Last year's winner is back. Now, before we get a word from the great man about the great horse, let's go to his number one fan. Song for someone, that is, Paul Keeley. <laughs> yeah, I, I like Song for someone. It's funny, I, he was a much bigger... He went off 11 to 8 for the race last year, which was at Kempton. Uh, um, overnight, he was a fair bit bigger, and he was, he was, you know, I remember thinking he was a silly prize. Uh, me and a few of the lads jumped on, and for a lot of the race, he looked like he was never going to get there, but he really stuck his head down and battled. And, you know, you, the horses like that, they, you know, you, you take them to your heart, don't you? And, you know, two runs this year, he's, he's almost exactly the same. I mean, first time out at, at Asker, you can say it might have been a bit of a no race with Lorena, but he skipped over his hurdles like he was just, just jumping for fun. Really enjoyed it. And last time he gave £2 to Silver Street at Cheltenham. Uh, and there was only five hurdles in the race. Now, I think taking the hurdles out is very much against him because he skips over them so well. Uh, and he still battled. He gave £2 to Silver Street. Silver Street come on and beat an Epitompe uh, next time out. And his third favourite for the champion, Tonga Sunman, is 20 to 1. Now, he probably is better over a little bit further, but there, there have been some... Uh, some strong staying two milers that have ended up winning the champion hurdle. Hopefully, if it goes all right, he, he might get the gig. But if not, then then you can go to entry with him, can't you? But he's very much, you know, I, I will say at the moment, 
there are very few horses going into this year's champion hurdle on the back of two straight career bests, which Song for Someone's had so far, and who knows, he might have one again tomorrow. Absolutely. It, uh, uh, Kills, just a quick word. From an anti-post perspective, you, you know, of those that might still move in the market, he, he surely looks one of the best of the Brits, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, it's just because, because he's tough, he's in form. Um, you, 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 your issue is um, the race tomorrow, if Goshen doesn't win, they'll just say he blows out again. I mean, it it really is song for someone's to win, isn't it? Unless unless Goshen comes back. Now, we don't know what he's going to do because, um, you know, he was supposed to have had a fibrillating heart last time. Then the trainer's changed his mind and just said he, he, he didn't seem to be happy in, with getting crowded. So he's going to make the running. They're going to they're try and make it a right test, I'd imagine. Um, so we'll see. I don't know how much he's going to change in the market now, but I certainly think he deserves to go there. Yeah, absolutely. Navajo pass. We can throw him in, couldn't we? Broke Bouvadere on his comeback up at Haydock the last time, as Tom mentioned in the show. Right, Tom Simmons, without further ado, let's bring you in here. How is he, first and foremost? Um, he seems fine, thank you. Yeah, I rode him this morning. Um, he, he's a horse that doesn't really um, do an awful lot at home at all. Um, bar when we schooled him, Ben Post actually schooled him on Thursday, and he was his usual electric, efficient self. Um it's, it's. I don't really know why we haven't run him since the international in a, in a positive way. We just didn't go to Haydock. I don't really know why, but we didn't anyway. Um, but he's good, and we're looking forward to running him tomorrow. But it's very much just a case of taking it race by race. You know, a grade grade two is a grade two. They're not something that we look on as oh, we're going to win and then go to Cheltenham or indeed Entry. So we'll just see what happens tomorrow. I'm hoping, obviously, that. Um, we can have another good day. Um, you know, dual Kingwell winners don't happen that often, as you might see from the record of them. But, um, you know, he's fine and we're just going to take it race by race. And um, he's gone. In that, this is not in a, a bad thing. I don't think he's gone quite under the radar, really. And I suppose we haven't nailed our flag to the mask of the Cheltenham uh, race. So maybe that's why he's slightly um, bigger price than people might think. Um but we'll just take it race at a time and see what happens tomorrow. But we're very happy with him. And um, as you say, we, we've just run him in the races that we thought were the right ones so far this year. Um, and he has, um, you know, come up with more than we expected each time. And as you say, Paul, I think at Cheltenham, I was absolutely gutted when they took the hurdles out. I was devastated because I think people don't realise once these horses get out of rhythm. You know, he cantered round the home straight, round the hurdles, which he thought was very strange. And I'm not trying to say he's clever, he's too clever, but he just does understand that once you get jumping hurdles, that's when he builds his momentum. Because I think you'll notice that Asker, when he won beating Marina and Call Me Lord, his last two hurdles were his quickest and his most accurate because he's going the quickest he is, you know, and that's why at Cheltenham it wasn't ideal at all, but it was lovely to see the way he got his head down and um, vested, um, you know, a subsequent grade one winner giving him weight. He is an uber trier, isn't he? That's why we love him. I'm not opposing him. I think he's going to win tomorrow, and I'm hopeful that he's going to run a biggie in the champion like Kills as well. Pat Cooney's got to give six pounds to Goshen. What are we expecting the market to do? Will Goshen's legion of fans, dwindling though they might be, be coming out again? Yeah, the Goshen bandwagon. There's there's less of us on it now than we were at uh, at Cheltenham back in March, aren't there? Getting six pounds, you know, different Goshen. He's certainly of interest in the market, isn't he? But um, if you're only as good as your last few runs, he has a bit to do. I'd like him to bounce back. He'd love a champion hurdle with a back-to-form Goshen in it. I give a healthy respect to Navajo Pass as well. I mean, you beat Boover Dare and so forth. But you just keep coming back to song for someone, don't you? He's, he's a real star of a horse. Uh, he's short enough, I think, six to five against giving the Goshen uh, weight and so forth. I do have a question for Thomas. Slight maybe concern, I'd maybe not. It's heavy ground at Wing Canton. Are you worried the ground might be too testing for him? That is always a worry, and the ground has actually always been one of those things we've never been that certain of. But, I mean, over, a, a, you know, a sort of, well, it's a two-mile race as opposed to further, then that's fine. You know, we have, he won, I know it was off 136, which now looks like a sort of, um, present um when he made his debut last year it was very testing at font well i know it's a different kettle of fish in a grade two but he dealt with it well that day he ran on equally i think it was pretty heavy the day he ran at sand down under pot weight and a handicap and even against thomas darby when he was in the um in the grade three hurdle when he was beaten um um over two three so i it's not ideal but i don't 
really see that being an excuse at the moment. You never quite know what happens after the race, but for me, he should deal with it, yeah. Great stuff. Listen, you won't find a better preview anywhere this weekend, anywhere. Let's go to Ascot then. Grade one time here on What A Shout. It is the Ascot Chase. Select field as ever expected. Pat Cooney, I'll come to you first. Well, he is one of these horses, isn't he? He blew out in the race last year. What price is the favourite right now with Bet365? The mighty surname is five to four run, Dave. And if I'd said to you, I don't know, three or four months ago, these are the five runners for the race. Surname, we're going to price the race up. We're thinking of going four to five surname. I think there would have been a stampede to be on. But it was great to see him turn up at our Bet365 Charlie Hall. It was a marvellous performance. Not so good last time out. Cheap pieces on for the first time. Who knows? I don't know how that's going to affect him. I love him. He's 172. I keep thinking that may be an inflated rating. The other thing I keep thinking of, everyone keeps saying, oh, he's, he's much better around Ascot. Well, if he's been around Ascot seven times. He's won three. It's, it's not earth shattering, is it? So on balance, you pick your poison, don't you? At four to five, I, I think you can only lay him rather than play him. I think he's going to drift as well. He'll do for me. The cheap pieces were a curveball, I must admit. But with other front runners in the race, Kills, I'm hoping that Harry Cobden will, of course, just, just take a nice little sit and go with him. He didn't have as hard a race, did he, in the King George as, as last year. However, I know you're keen to get him. Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny, you know. I mean, you know, this is a horse that I've absolutely loved at times. I mean, you know, I had a good bet on him when he beat Altior, but... You know, he, he's a very strange horse. Now, he needed a hood in his early years to pacify him. Now he seems to need cheek pieces to, to wake him up. So, uh, you know, he's obviously got his own mind about the game. And Harry Cobbins said he didn't seem to actually want to line up at Kempton. Um, my initial thought was, well, they've held him up and he's just sulked. But, I mean, he sounded like he didn't want to go. So they put the cheek pieces on. They might work, they might not work. But I think he's got his own ideas about the game nowadays, is not he? And you've got a horse that who won first time out last season, then got badly beat at Kempton, then fell when well beaten when long odds on. Uh, and he's won first time out this season and then ran a stinker. So what do you expect from him? If, you know, it's one of those where he could literally win this by 15 lengths on the bridle and you wouldn't be that surprised. Uh, but I think you've got to take him on. Uh, and I think Paul Nichols has got the uh, has got the right one. Master Tommy Tucker, if, he, if he's jumping holes together and he has been miles better this year uh, than in previous years, he just, he just looks like a horse with a lot of speed at the trip. He whizzed around Kempton last time. I thought, you know, OK, Imperial Aura fell, so he didn't have much to beat. But it's just the way he did it, and he really did quicken up in the straight. Uh, and I think he's got a real serious chance of beating him. Well, what about Dashiell Drasher taking him on? Would that concern you at all? Because we know what Dashiell Drasher's going to do. Yeah, he, he's going to do that as well. Look, they, you know, they're, they're both pretty fast horses. It all depends uh, on Master Tommy Tucker's jumping. If he jumps OK... I think natural talent-wise, he's a better horse than Dashiell Drasher. Yeah, Benny's king, the veteran who likes Ascot, he likes to be up there as well. Just uh, something about me thinks Riders on the Storm could bounce back here if this is going to be set up. But he likes to get on with it as well. Tom Simmons, what do you make of the Ascot chase? Um, I I agree with you uh, with uh, Sirname. Like he, you know, he's a fantastic horse, and I think Paul Nichols has handled. I mean, well, he doesn't need me to tell him that clearly, but. Um, his handling of him has been astonishing. You know, he appeared as this sudden, you know, chaser that's uh, this renegade that was that appeared as this top highest rated chaser for years. But one run does not make him a bad horse, but it just puts a bit of a question mark as to his. And again, I think it's to do with his frame of mind more than anything. And if this is going to help him wake up and, you know, go out like he did round Ascot when he beat Altior, then he'll take, well, he won't get beaten, will he? You just wonder, and as you say, at the price he is, you'd be looking elsewhere. And for me, the homebred of Jeremy Scott's in Dashiell Drasher, who is unbeaten at Ascot, um, which is a strange thing because actually he likes to lug out to his left at his fences round Ascot. But, you know, he's obviously a very upwardly mobile horse. He was a very good hurdler and he's definitely besting that over fences. Um, I, I think he will take a lot of beating. You know, he's done nothing wrong this year. Um, he probably might have needed the run early on at Taydot behind Master Tommy Tucker. But, you know, I, I love a horse. He's a real grinder, this horse. You know, he's by a stallion who's horse. They just keep going no matter what. Um, they're real diehard types. And for me, I think he'll take a bit of beating here. It's one of those races, isn't it? Only five runners then in the Ascot chase. Where are you going to go? Get your selections in below. Right then, big call time. Okay, what have we got coming up for you? Loads of Cheltenham, isn't it? I'll tell you what, I've been really happy this week. 
to see what I can confirm now is Donald McCain having some really nice youngsters in his yard again. Bareback Jack is an interesting outsider for the Supreme. If you take third time lucky as a guide, we had beaten before that one hit the last at Musselboro last time. I like him. And Dreams of Home, he really impressed me at Carlisle. He did so at Weatherby on his debut. I think they've got a real worldie there. Some nice talent in the yard again for Donald McCain. Could he have a big festival winner coming up? That's my big call for the week, actually. Great to see. Kills. Yeah, just going to bring up the Mars chase again. I, you know, I have got a feeling that Envoy Allen isn't going to have it all its own way. And, uh, you know, I mean, it invites ridicule from, from his legion of fans. But, I mean, he still hasn't beaten anything this year. The horse he, the horse he beat three and a half lengths last time, Feed You Dairies. Um, you know, he beat, he beat him with three and a half lengths because Asterian Falange fell uh, at the first. Asterian Falange finished um, miles ahead of him next time, but still miles behind Monkfish. That's a sort of level of form we're talking about. He hasn't beaten anything. I liked Chantry House win, win at Weatherby the other day. I thought he was quite eye-catching. I still think Chamblou, I was a bit negative after he got beat at Sandown, but when I keep looking at it, he did not jump like a stag, and that's, you know, going from the front of Cheltenham, that's the way to do it. I think he might just have a little bit of a wake-up call. Last year's last year's uh, two-and-a-half-mile novices uh, over hurdles, they were the weakest of the division, and I think it's the same can be said of the chasers as well. But he might just have a couple of difficult ones to beat. Yeah, and the insincere sporting John goes there as well, Kills. I agree. It's in JP McManus's yeah, hands, isn't it? Further, to be honest, Sporting John. Definitely. Do you think he will go further, even if it buckets down? I mean, if it buckets down, he might not. Uh, the only worry is he also looked to me like he didn't like Cheltenham all that much last year as well. But, I mean, he's, an, he's another one to throw in the mix. It was too bad to be true. So his opposition mounting to Envoy Allen. Pat Cooney, let's come to you for a big shout. Yeah, well, we didn't have the Grand National last year, of course. And when the weights came out, winning offers, we were thinking, ah, we might not be so busy on it. It's the Grand National. Let's get Cheltenham out of the way. As soon as the weights come out, it was absolutely manic. And, the, you know, you look at the race and, OK, if Tiger Roll wins a third one, brilliant. But there's always going to be a great story in the race, isn't there? Bryony Frost could win it on Yala Reinke. Rachel Blackmore, she could get a ride in the race and win that. Cloth Cap could win for John Joe Trevor Hemmings. There's so many great stories in the race as well. So the race is alive and kicking. There's no doubt about it. We, we've got a real, real busy book on the race. And we were busier on the day one of the weights than any other time there's been. And it's so many different horses. So the race is alive and kicking. And that, that's great to see. And it still reaches out to the betting public and the wider public at large as well. Hugely exciting, isn't it? Oh, we didn't even have the race last year. I'm with Pat. It's going to mount. Tom Simmons, have you got something for us? Yeah, a horse I love. Um, I've really enjoyed watching it actually from a while back because he actually beat a horse that we actually ended up training from France. And then the two horses ended up in the same county in Herefordshire, bizarrely. R1 blotted his copybook and decided he would rather stand still, which is Don Bursey, a talented juvenile. Um, but the horse that beat him on his only start in France was a horse called Ibleo, who actually ran his first race behind a horse called Al Manzor on the flat. So that horse has actually had an interesting career as to the animals he's run against. but. It's what he's doing now that matters with Venetia, which is astonishing because he if you watch him in the paddock, he walks around like he's half asleep. I mean, to be honest, we had a horse run against him at Sandown and we had to keep overtaking him in the paddock because he was so sort of laid back about the job. And he's the same in a race. It looks like he's half asleep. He switches off or Charlie Deutsch does that. And then he just comes in and picks them up in the straight. He was very unlucky, I'd say, to run into Sky Pirates um, at Cheltenham. Um, but has subsequently shown that that form to be, you know, not all wrong, but he's definitely facilitated. Um, um, well, I'd say I, Sky, Sky Pirate might not be an Arkle horse if you look at the form in All Mankind, but I'd say Ibleo could definitely be a um, Grand Daniel type. He's just that really lovely way of two milers switching off and then just coming in and staying one up the hill at a stiff track, which is what he did at Doncaster and at Sandown in his last two starts. And his rating will be high enough. I mean, I think I think he's even ended in the champion chase as well. Whether he is that is a question, but um, he's uh, just a lovely type of horse and a great way of doing it. Last time I looked, he was in the Ryanair as well. I love Ibleo as well, Tom. The way he jumped that last at Doncaster. Again, get on the members section. You can check it out. Ibleo, we love him. He's got a bit of song for someone about him. Let's have a look at Sunday then. What a treat for you. Galling. Oh, the freeze meant Newbury wasn't on last weekend. But... Big pat on the back, everyone. We've managed to reschedule it to this Sunday, and it means we've got a sterling card for you. And we'll start off with the Denman Chase, won by some big hitters. Native River, of course, last couple of years. Great to see him bounce back, wasn't it, the Cotswold Chase. Kiels, who's going to win it this time round? 
Yeah, I, I think, you know, it's probably a little bit tighter on the book than, than the odds will suggest, but I think it's fairly straightforward for Flanders over, isn't it? I mean, this, this is his sort of track move. He's run there twice. He's won without, without coming off the bridle. Everything else has a bit of a question mark against it, and lost in translation is obviously coming back from that window. Kalashnikov, will he stay? Um, secret investor won't want any more rain. The conditioning, you know, not good enough. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's fairly straightforward for Clan now that Champ's not there. Uh, should win. And, of course, unlike some of these, he doesn't have Cheltenham as a target. So he just go there and he'll be absolutely bang on, whereas others might come on for the run. I spoke to Harry Cobden and Harry Durham, Paul's assistant, about this chap, and they are brimming with confidence. Tom Simmons, the Denman chase. I'd agree. I think Clan Zobo, this type of track, clearly plays to his strengths. He's... Um, you know, he's a fantastic horse, um, and I'd say he's be the one to beat. Um, but the horse you just commented there on the Kalashnikov, I thought his run by Mr. Fisher was really, really good. Um, he's obviously had a few issues um, not at the end of well, last year, but, I mean, he's a proper horse, isn't he, and a real grinder. And to me, staying shouldn't really be a problem to him. I mean, you know, he's out of a sister to Kicking King, and we all remember Kicking King. You know, he was second in an arc on himself and then went on to win a Gold Cup. So if stamina is an issue, I'd be very surprised. You never quite know, obviously. But um, with that confidence run, well, run that will give him confidence at Cheltenham behind him, you know, he could really turn up here and um, challenge um, the kind of ones that are more prominent in the market. It's very interesting, that, isn't it? Paul Murphy, one of the great national readers of our time. He knows what he's doing there. And, Kills, I just want to throw back to you on this. It seems we're all going for Mr Fisher now at a price. It would be nice to see him run well for Fisher's prospects, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, it would do, definitely. Yeah, no, he's, you know, and he's a decent horse. I've got to remember, he, you know, he showed an awful lot of, of, of pace and power when he won the, when he won the Bet Fair Hurdle a couple of seasons ago. He's a very good horse at his best, and I think that was a good run at Chelsea. I think he's a good piece of form, so... So, yeah, if he does stay, uh, but we don't know. It didn't look like it at Haydock first time, but he was entitled to need it. And, of course, it was Haydock ground. Uh, and it's dried out to good to soft at movie, so he didn't get to be that bad. Tells a tale about Austin Translation that we're looking more at Kalashnikov back, Goonies, isn't it? Five to six at the time of the filming then uh, for the dual King George. When, is that under pressure? Uh, not really, no. You can certainly see him winning, though, can't you? And, of course, he was a little bit disappointing on Boxing Day, wasn't he? Lost in Translation. He's got to be considered as well amongst the winners now. And it's this fella's first run since the wind up. But they were on 11-6. And I agree with the fellas here. Kalashnikov on 11 stone getting the six pound. He's a talented horse, isn't he? And, he, and he's going to travel well throughout the race. So he's going to be a real contender in running at some point. Will he stay? Will he not? Well, that remains to be seen. But I certainly see more wisdom in backing Kalashnikov at his price than uh, Klander's Zobo at his at the moment. And lost in translation, he might just be the value better of the race. But I, I just think, keep looking at Kalashnikov. I think, yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a good horse to be that kind of a price if the trip is only the reason you can be that big a price about him. Oh, it's the Denman chase. Can't wait for this one. Three o'clock then at Newbury. Serve it up. It's the game spirit. No Altior, first and foremost, Keels. He was due to run, wasn't he? He now goes straight to Cheltenham. But Nicky Henderson, is this one of the biggest curveballs you can remember in any season anywhere? Champ. Yeah, very strange. Didn't uh, didn't see that coming. Um, I don't think anybody did, really, did he? But, but you know, if he expects the horse to be fresh, he um, was never short of pace. Uh, the one thing, when he won the RSA last year, I mean, people, a lot of people talked about his jumping. The jumping actually isn't that bad. He was a bit slow at a few, um, which you'd have, to, you'd have to be worried over over two miles, obviously, if he's like that. But, I mean, you know, he's jumping. You've seen an awful lot worse rounds of jumping at Cheltenham, winning rounds at the Cheltenham Festival uh, than he put in last year. I don't think it's that bad. Whether he's going to be able to jump fast enough at the, the pace, is they're likely to go here is another matter, and of course it's all about being re being ready for Cheltenham. So um, if he's if he's on his head um, too early in the race, he's not going to be he's not going to be beaten up to get it. And I think you know as much as I liked Green Team's um, chances at a big price for the champion chase, he's up against it with a six pound penalty, isn't it? Shouldn't shouldn't so Royal be uh, near a market leader for this? We know he has his limits, but he is what he is. He's getting six pound off Green Team. He's getting three pound off of Champ, who surely needs further. Um, he's got to come out as very nearly the best horse in the race, surely. 
Yeah, it, it, this is remarkable. I think he was sitting exclusive this week in racing post. Henrietta Knight comes out. He said, you know, who was schooling him in between seasons, that he jumped really well. We taught him to do a few new things. He's got more talent than best mate. Now, let's go to Tom Simmons, assistant to Nicky Henderson for quite a while. You were really well thought of there. What was the thought process, can you imagine, at Seven Barrows when this curveball happened? Oh, I wouldn't know. I just... <laughs> It's quite an interesting one, isn't it? Well, actually, in my time there, um, <clears throat> we actually had a mare called China Sky in training, um, and she was the slowest thing we had in quite some time. Um, and she produced this monster in Champ. So there you go. But she was obviously also from um, the eponymous family that is um, Cat Day, you know, best mate. And again, I think, like Kicking King, best mate probably would have won an arc or had... Um, but Malfman intervened and he probably, let's not talk about Salsalito Bay, but should have maybe won a Supreme. So the family is not devoid of pace. Um, but it might be that Nicky, and I can understand this, is looking at the ground going, you know, we want to get a run into him, but not a slog. And I can understand that. It's just quite a strange, it's like sort of slightly playing chess with good horses. So I don't feel sorry for him remotely, but he was a checkmate. But um He's obviously just trying to do the best thing for the horse, I imagine, is to give him a run round somewhere where he's not going to have to really, um, you know, stretch himself over three miles, which, as you say, he's always been a horse showing a lot of uh, toe. You know, King's Theatre horses aren't always dyed in the wool stayers. Um, they always have that bit of sp speed and class, you know, like Captain Chris did, um, for example. But the horse I do like in this race, and it's not that I'm batting for our own county a lot, I just do like Fanny and Destreval a lot. I, I wonder, I've been watching him, and I remember seeing him when he won first time out of Newbury on a flat left-handed track and thought he looked pretty damn good. I know it was a novice handicap chase, but since then you've watched him on right-handed tracks and round Cheltenham, which is obviously not flat, wondering whether he just prefers the nature of a flat left-handed track, which a lot of French horses can do, like, let's say, well, it's not left-handed, but like Clanders Oboe and Silvaniaco Comte did at Kempton, that sort of more park track. Um, so I quite like him as a price. I'm not quite sure what price he is, but he's a horse I've admired a lot. And he's a young horse and has still got plenty of improvement in him. Let's go to Pat Cooney then. Of course, Magic Saint it was that beat uh, Fanny and Destreval around Cheltenham. I know that they're quite keen on a good run from him as well at the Nichols Camp Magic Saint. It's not just all about the big two in the market, is it, Pat? No, and as Rakeel said, you can make a plausible case out for So Royal on official ratings. Let's take Champ out the equation for a moment. He comes out as the top rated horse in the race. I look at Champ, when he made his hurdle debut, it was two miles five. So the only time I think a two mile race has been in, in the conversation has been in the last week for Champ. I think if you were Nicky Henderson and JP McManus with Champ, well, what would you accept uh, on Sunday as a performance? A likeable running on third and room to go and think about Chilton. I don't think winning the race is very much in the equation for the horse. That would certainly be the Brucey bonus. Uh, Tom put up Fanny and Destruva. I, I wish he'd won at Cheltenham on the 11th of December. I'm just looking at him now. I thought he was cruising when he came down. That was two miles four. You just look at the race. Greenatin is solid, but he's got a six pound penalty. This is the sort of race I think us bookmakers would look at Greenatin and Champ and think, yeah, we can get both of these beat. We've got a good one in So Royal, Fanny on Destruval, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I think you can get the front two beat here. I do think Champ can only drift in the market. I don't think the public will latch on to him. That is very interesting indeed. I must admit, I looked at this at the start of the week. It made my head hurt. Just after listening to the panel, that's hurting even more. Granted, team for me, reproduction of that Tingle Creek run will probably do. But this has been a weird year, people, hasn't it? Pandemic, COVID, all sorts of things. We've had a derby all over the place. And I'll tell you what, champ running in a game spirit. Who ever thought that would happen? 3.35 then, the Betfair handicap hurdle. Oh, thank goodness this is on worth 125 grand and most of the big contenders do stand their way. As Harry Fry broke on the show last weekend, no metier. He goes straight for the supreme novice hurdle. I'm assuming Kadzan Pat Cooney is still the favourite. He's clinging on to favouritism. Yeah, he's been favourite since the, uh, the revised entries came out. Uh, Soaring Glory has been popular. They were the best two backed in the uh, the original Betfair hurdle. And I think the market has just been relatively quiet since. There's other horses you can make good cases out for. They head the market right now. It's a sort of race where the public can latch on to one horse and maybe, you know, it, it, it surprises to a degree. There's, what, 24 runners. It's going to be wild, the race. 
I think the horse that could shorten up, you know, is Mr. Coffee of Nicky Henderson, Nicky de Boinville uh, riding that horse. A horse who hugely impressive when he won off 128 on his reappearance. Went up £10, got beat off this mark last time out of Sandown. It was pretty much unraceable ground. He pulled really, really hard. Uh, draw a line through that one. He's still off 138. 10 stone, 12. Nicky Henderson, Newbury. You know, OK, he's got Buzz, who's got a perfectly decent chance, heading the weights with a good claim of Kevin Brogan up. I can see the public latching on to a Mr. Coffee. I think Cad Sand soaring glory. I, I don't think they'll get any shorter. Yeah, form book chances, I'll give you that. Um, but I'm going to jump aboard the Mr. Coffee bandwagon, first of all. OK, let's go to Tom Simmons then. Nicky Henderson and this meeting, it's an association, isn't it? Yeah, he enjoys, um, <clears throat> definitely enjoys winning the Tote Gold Trophy as it was, the better for a hurdle now. Um, let's not talk about poor GRC, so he got chinned. Um, but in this race, I, I like his too, but I also am drawn to the form of which actually brings a horse of ours in, Landon Abel Lab, which brings in Guard Your Dreams and indeed Soaring Glory, who I think are very talented and could be, you know, off very lenient marks in a race of this nature. Um, I say very lenient, but they need to have a bit of um, poundage in hand, obviously, to figure. But the horse I do like, and I, I've obviously already um, bigged up another horse owned by this and, well, trained by this outfit, is um, Mac the Man. You know, he was actually running a very big race last year when he got brought down. He's actually running off a pound lower than he turned, uh, no, just only two pounds higher than he turned up last year when he had a pretty awful um, experience. And then obviously they've tried chasing and then he's on the confidence boost around Wing Canton and looked good there. He's sort of a bit, he could be a bit like a Kalashnikov. He's not as good as Kalashnikov at this stage, clearly, but as in he's a horse that I think might come off the bridle, but just keep going, and which is what you need to clearly do around Newbury. Um, and, you know, he's only off, 10-6 and um, you know he he actually beat um, Song for Someone last year as well at Sandown so he's a horse I followed anyway um, and I think he could um, have sneaked in here without people really noticing because it's only it'd only be his fourth run since he ran in this race last year mm, Interesting, Matt the man then, there's a bit of a curveball, it's been all about novices this rails, uh, t t uh, kills isn't it I like Soaring Glory, where are you going? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a sort of glory fan. One thing I have to say, sometimes you get these big field races and you think, you know, are they going to go fast? Are they not? And sometimes they don't, but they definitely are here, aren't they? There's loads of places in this race. And obviously this, for, for pleasure, um, is is almost unsteerable, isn't it? I mean, he just he just has to go. Uh, but you've got the likes of Shake Him Up, Harry Annual, and Victor's Guard, your dreams. They've all made the run in as well in the past. Um, so it looks like they're going to go fast. I think that will suit Soaring Glory. Um, obviously, beat Brave Man's game earlier in the season. Um, hasn't gone quite right for him. Um, but his bumper form tells you he ought to be miles better than the mark of 133. Um, so, if they, you know, if he's suited to a big field strong gallop, he could be very, very well handicapped. I'd give a chance to Edward Stone as well. I think he, he you know, he was obviously going to go over fences. Well, he did go over fences and fell. Um, absolutely hacked up at market raise and back over hurdles. I don't think he's had um, what he really wants, and that's a bit of decent ground and a strong run race. Uh, and he might just get both of those on Sunday because there ain't that much racing around. It's already dried out the good of soft. So uh, but they would be my two. A favour saw in glory, but I'm quite interested that Edward Stone use uh, a bit of a bigger price. Oh, it is a race to savour this, isn't it? It's 3.35. It's the Betfair Handicap. Time to bring in the guys at MyRacing.com then. Do check out their website for expert tips and analysis. Each way double from the guys this week. 205 at Haydock giving a chance. Unbelievable forgotten horse. Last year's stay as hurdle winner. Lisnagar Oscar in the Rendlesham. And then 3 o'clock, another horse that needs to bounce back over hurdles. The guys at My Racing think Lammy Surge will do just that. Time for the weekend winners. Paul Keeley, take the floor. Uh, yeah, I'll go 150 at Asker. You remember a, a horse that we were backing earlier in the season called The Machine for Kerry Lee. Uh, runs in the Reynolds Town Chase. Bit disappointed in the newbie last time. Had a wind operation just a few days afterwards. I uh, think it's a very, very weak grade two. The actual first three in the anti-post betting didn't turn up. So uh, I'm going to go The Machine in the 150 at Asker. 
Yes, indeed, in the Reynolds town, the last final jigsaw potentially for now, the Brown Advisory, what used to be the RSA, of course. Love the machine, really interesting race. I'm going to give you Mon Myrel of Paul Nichols, Jed Mason, John Hales, and Sir Alex Ferguson have got an absolute worldie there. I think it's he can see off Nassalam Haydock 314. Pat Cooney? Yeah, uh, Wayne Canton for me, the 213, number five, Flagrant de la, de la Tepier of uh, Robert Wolford, Aidan Coleman. Uh, won over course and distance last time. It went up £10. That normally turns me off. But he only won by a length and three quarters. But there was nine lengths back to the third. He was a real likeable taking performance. Very progressive. And I just thought when seeing him, I'm going to stay with this fella till he does get beaten. Aidan Coleman back on a board Saturday. Handy horse, grey horse, he'd be bouncing along in front, a la Dezo Orchid. I'm glad you told us he was grey, Pat, and I'm glad there's a graphic up there, because that pronunciation was an absolute shock. <laughs> there are your weekend winners. All we've got time for then here on What the Shout this weekend, my delighted panel that I've had with me. Tom Simmons, thank you so much for giving all your insight. Fingers crossed with Song for Some Money comes through it as expected and goes to the champion hurdle. Yeah, it's merely, uh, you know, well, well, it's a kind of, mission to see where we go after this which festival spring festival we could decide to go to but let's hope we can we can read the script right tomorrow first but thank you very much absolute pleasure to have you on kills great to have you back it won't be long till you're back in the studio i'll keep teasing this one yeah it won't be next week i've got things to do next week but week after i shall be back start of march cheers kills and pat cooney great to have you on as ever yeah, I've really enjoyed it and uh, really enjoying the weekend ahead for us. So let's hope it all goes well, and particularly for Tom with Song for Someone. Good luck pronouncing that nap of yours as well. Good luck to all of you out there. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, or indeed hashtag Watershout on Twitter. Look for all the social clips coming your way. Don't forget safe gambling is what it's all about. Take your time this weekend. Very important stuff. Don't forget you can download the Must Have Racing Post app. You can do that on the App Store or the Play Store itself. Until then, it's a hell of a weekend. Enjoy that sport.